السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من يأخذ عني هؤلاء الكلمات فيعمل بهن أو يعلم من يعمل بهن قال أبو هريرة فقلت أنا يا رسول الله فأخذ بيدي فعد خمسة قال اتق المحارم تكن أعبد الناس وارض بما قسم الله لك تكن أغنى الناس وأحسن إلى جارك تكن مؤمنا وأحب للناس ما تحب لنفسك تكن مسلما ولا تكثر الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تميت القلب رواه أحمد والترمذي وحسنه الألباني Respected ulama, dearest elders, brothers, sisters in Islam We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this beautiful deen May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us with iman take us with iman and raise us on the day of qiyamah in the company of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and our Salafus Salihin, our pious predecessors. This beautiful deen is all-encompassing, and it is for us to imbibe and to bring into our lives. And we have to take every aspect and every facet from the words of Allah and the sunnah of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This journey we need to begin and we need to continue with throughout our lives, right up to the time we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to constantly be reading the Qur'an, studying the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, increasing our knowledge of this beautiful deen, so that we can increase in our amal and increase in our practice and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith that we read <coughs> is a heart-rendering hadith of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and there are many lessons that we can derive. The hadith is reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and it is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and the Sunan of Imam At-Tirmidhi. Albani has graded the hadith as Hassan. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who says that on one occasion Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked may ya'khudu anni ha'ula'i al-kalimat that who is there that will take these words from me fayamalu bihin so he will practice upon them, O yu'allimu may ya'malu bihin. Or he will teach someone or people who will practice upon them. Now, dear brothers, we need to reflect on this question of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is addressing the Sahaba radiallahu anhum <coughs> and saying that who is there that will take these words from me? In other words, who is there that will take this ilm, this knowledge from me? Because the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were ilm, they were knowledge. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was offering some knowledge to the companions, to the sahaba radiallahu anhum. And now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directs their attention to what he expects of this knowledge. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَيَعْمَلُوا بِهِنْ So he will take this knowledge and he will practice upon them. He will practice upon these words. 
that I am about to give. If he is not capable himself due to whatever factors it may be, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now turns his attention to another option. Oh, yu'allimu may ya'malu bihin. Or he will teach it to someone who will practice upon them. So dear brothers, sisters, friends in Islam, this should be our focus. We should constantly be increasing in our knowledge <coughs> of this beautiful deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intent of amal, the intention of practicing upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If for some reason we cannot practice or even if we practice and this should always be our focus why because we do not want to fall within that category of people who command others to do good while we abstain from that good ourselves so we should encourage others also to practice on what we are practicing and we should uh, we should uh, spread this beautiful deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks this question and without any hesitation Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who says فَقُلْتُ أَنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who says that I, O Nabi of Allah, I will take these words from you and I will practice upon them or I will teach them to somebody who will practice upon them and subhanallah we have heard these words from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu explains how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveyed this message to him. In the company of others, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took the hand of Abu Hurairah fa'akhadha biyadi. He took hold of my hand fa'adda khamsan. So he counted five. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam counted five words of advice to Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu on his hand, meaning on the five fingers of Abu Huraira, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him five words of advice. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised, ittaqil maharim, refrain, abstain, fear al maharim the prohibitions. Stay away from those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have made haram. What will happen as a result of this? Takun a'bad nas You will be the greatest worshipper of man. You will be that person who worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. Dear brothers, sisters, Friends in Islam, let us reflect for a moment. Look at these words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this instruction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And look at the outcome. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Ittaqil maharim. Fear and abstain al maharim, the prohibitions. And if we take the prohibitions into account, it is everything that Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have prohibited us from doing. Whether it be shirk, it be kufr, it be nifaq, it be uququl walidain, disobedience to one's parents, cutting off family ties, oppression, sariqa, theft, zina, adultery and fornication, it be speaking lies, carrying tales, Whatever type of sin we can possibly think of will fall under this category of al-maharim, the prohibitions. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, ittaqil maharim, abstain and fear al-maharim, keep away from those things that Allah and his Rasul have prohibited. What will the outcome be? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, takun a'bad nas you will be the greatest worshipper of mankind. Now, we understand worship generally in the sense that we stand on the musalla, on the sajjada, 
and we perform salah, you sit and you make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you recite the Quran, you fast, you give charity, these are all acts of ibadah and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are common and understood by each one of us. But look at the analogy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that abstain from al-maharim, from the prohibitions, takun a'bad nas you will be the greatest worshipper of Allah. So one is that a person does good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other is that a person abstains from evil for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recently, we involved in business. So in the business environment, we know smoking publicly is a problem. So one brother came and he said, what's this, we can't smoke anymore. So I said to him, uncle, don't leave out the cigarettes because it is the rules of the work environment. Abstain from smoking for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave out your cigarette for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was taken aback, shocked. Said, what are you telling me? First time in my life, somebody is telling me don't smoke for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we have to realize and understand. That one is we do good for the sake of Allah, we carry out a'mal saliha, good deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the other hand also, we should refrain from sin and stay away from haram to please Allah. Why? Because Allah has prohibited us from it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has warned us against it, so we stay away from it. And if we just think about it for a moment, that when a person is staying away from haram and he's staying away from prohibitions, then in reality, he is filling his life with goodness. He is cleaning his life of evil, filling his life with good. Why? Because all faraid wajibat, anything that Allah has made compulsory, a person will be carrying out. Why? Because staying away from a fard is haram. So automatically the faraid will be taken care of. Over and above that, if a person does nawafil and carries out voluntary acts of good, that will be great. But the basic for each and every one of us is that we stay away from the prohibitions of Allah and we do what we're supposed to do minimum. That is the bare minimum. And subhanallah, the outcome of this is takun a'bad nas you will be the greatest worshipper of people. Hassan Basri rahimahullah, like other scholars have statements with regards to this aspect, Hassan Basri rahimahullah explains that ma abad al-abiduna bi shay'in afdala min tarki ma nahahum allahu an. That a worshipper will not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything better then staying away from what Allah has prohibited him from. So this is an act of ibadah, an act of worship. Dear brothers, sisters, friends in Islam, reflect on this point for a moment, that when we carry out good deeds, we should carry them out for the sake of Allah. When we abstain from evil, we should abstain for the sake of Allah. And if we carry out any good deed for someone else, to impress someone, we know that that, can, that will be riya, and at times it will go into shirk also. If on the other hand we leave out sin, because my reputation will be spoiled, people will speak about me, people will not respect me anymore, or whatever else it may be, I need to maintain a certain standing in society, so I will stay away from this and that and the other. This is also a form of riya and a form of shirk also. So this is something we need to think about that we stay away from sin for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be the cause of us worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a most magnanimous, great manner. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued his advice to Abu Huraira radiallahu an. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Warda bima qasam Allahu lak. And be pleased, be happy 
with what Allah has decreed for you, has allotted for you. Takun aghnan nas. You will be the wealthiest of people. Dear brothers, wealth is not about abundance of resources. Wealth is not about <coughs> having lots of this dunya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al ghina ghina nafs Richness, wealth, independence is the ghina, the independence, the richness of one's nafs, one's soul. If a person is blessed with qana'ah, contentment, then he has been blessed with all khair and all good. Reflect on the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a person who wakes up in the morning and he has good health, he has safety in his environment, and he has sufficient provisions just for that day. And those sufficient provisions can be perhaps a little bit of water and a dry piece of bread, just to keep that person nourished for that day. فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَافِيرِهَا It is as if the entire world with its horns by its horns have been laid before that particular individual. You have safety, you have good health, and you have provisions for one day. It is as if you've got the entire dunya. Why? Because you can fulfill the purpose of your existence, and that is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, وَرْطَبِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ Be happy, be satisfied with what Allah ta'ala has decreed for you, allotted for you of this dunya. You will be the most wealthy and independent of people. Let us develop the strait of qana'ah, of contentment. Unfortunately, the norm is that we will look at those that have more than us of this dunya. As a result, we become greedy. We get jealous. But we are taught that we should look at those that have less than us of this world. And we should look at those that are higher than us as far as this deen is concerned, so that we will strive to emulate them in their deen, and we will be content with the lot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us of this dunya. وَأَحْسِنْ إِلَىٰ جَارِكَ تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنًا And be kind. أَحْسِنْ Be kind, be good. Treat with excellence your neighbor. تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنًا You will be a believer. Dear brothers, friends in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam continued to encourage me, advise me in regards to the neighbor, hatta dhanantu annahu sayuwarrithu. That he continued to advise until the point that I thought that the neighbor will also inherit. So, so great are the neighbors. We understand the rights of family. However, the rights of neighbors are extremely emphasized in the Quran and in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most important aspect with regards to the neighbor is that the neighbor should not be harmed by you. No harm should reach your neighbor from your side. Whatever it may be, it can be the slightest of harm. We should not cause harm to the neighbor in the least, but over and above that, we need to try and treat that neighbor with excellence in the best way possible. We need to take the example of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and, and treat our neighbors with excellence, with kindness. Dear brothers, sisters, friends in Islam, there are different <coughs> categories of neighbors. One is a neighbor who is a Muslim and is your relative. You have three rights to that neighbor. He is your neighbor, he is Muslim, your brother Muslim, and he is your relative. Three rights. Then there is a neighbor who is a Muslim. And then obviously there is a neighbor who is kafir. So, each one needs to be given their rights accordingly. We need to focus and emphasize and see how we can treat our neighbors in the best way possible. 
Furthermore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised Abu Huraira radiallahu an, wa ahibba lin nasi ma tuhibbu li nafsik. And love for mankind, love for people, what you love for yourself. Takun muslima, you will be a true muslim. You will be one who has submitted, surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, let alone loving for others what we love for ourselves, we have become jealous. Our lives are constantly driven, and every action that we do is driven by jealousy. Wal'iyadu billah, we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. So, well wishes are very, very scarce, very far and in between. Each one of us as Muslims, we need to be these true well wishes for each other. Ahibba lin nasi ma tuhibbu li nafsik. Love for people what you love for yourself. This will lead to a person's Islam and being a true Muslim. And the last word of advice Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave, wala tukthir al dihk And don't laugh too much. Don't increase in laughter. Why? فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةَ الدِّحْكَ تُمِيتُ الْقَلْبِ because too much of laughter kills the heart. You know, sometimes we use the phrase that laughter is the best medicine. So some amount of jovial atmosphere is good. However, la don't laugh too much. Don't focus only on enjoyment, on pleasure, on laughter, entertainment. Today, the entire world has been, is revolving around the entertainment industry. And it's all just about pleasure, about happiness, enjoyment, laughing, being jovial, having a nice time all the time. And we find that for us to do anything serious for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes cumbersome, bored, boring, difficult. So our focus and our attention has to shift. We know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa character was such that he constantly had a smile on his face. Every time Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum would see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he would meet them with a smile on his face. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would receive his companions in this way. And this is the sunnah. When we meet each other, when we are with each other, we should be smiling, be good. Glad, be happy, joyous to see each other. But also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never laughed to the extent that his molar teeth could be seen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa could never be heard laughing. <coughs> no sound would be heard. So this is something for us to think about, that what is our focus in life? This life is short, it is temporary. We have been created for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have been created as the vice chairs of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the face of this earth. We cannot take matters lightly in this world. We need to look at things seriously. We know the example of Salahuddin. He was never seen smiling. And when asked, he said that, how can I smile while Al-Aqsa is not in the hands of the Muslims, is occupied. Today we find so much of difficulty in the Muslim lands. We find so much of oppression against Muslims. Islam is being trampled upon and we are merrymaking, enjoying, passing our lives as if there is nothing better to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah ta'ala guide us to follow the Qur'an and follow the sunnah of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.